Okay, I've played this uh, once before solo, Ambush at Dehoop. Uh, Decision at Elst 1. Great scenario though for learning uh, tanks and firing ordnance or piets or so using those. So basically, um, the victory conditions are game end, ha game end, having greater or equal to one mobile AFV with functioning main armor left on board. Any AFV that is under recall at a game end counts as eliminated. <clears throat> so these three big boys here, um, tigers. Just have to be functioning. I thought they had to make it off the board so they're functioning. Basically, just clear out these boys. Whoa, pardon me. I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess they could just go down the road here. Interesting. Do they have to come in there? <laughs> Intern turn on on XP12, having already spent eight movement points. So oh, that's interesting. Okay. So they're going to come in here having spent, man, I am shaking. I'm all nervous. Um, having spent eight and then coming. So I. I guess I can just have one come up here. I'll have to kind of see what's going on here. I think this is an elevator. I'll check it out. This is grain. That's ground level. So I could come in here immediately turn. Now this polder is a problem. I could come around here and in fact, I think I'm going to do that. One, one of them is going to come over here because all I have to have is one. And these other two are going to come over and try to take care of these boys. Maybe the next time I'll get a tripod. That's a unique concept. So I have the half squads here in case I need them. I have the other side of the Pia just so I can see the numbers and the other side of the Tiger so I can see the numbers. And I'm gonna have to kinda, I'm having to kinda learn all this stuff again. What I mean, I have some idea what some of the stuff is like smoke, crew survival, morale, I don't know. All right, and, uh, and the polder, so that's a little different. So uh, I'll be right back. All right, um, so the polder represents a <clears throat> five foot wide deep water-filled drainage channel and the generally soggy surrounding ground that was prevalent in the vicinity of Elst. Uh, you know, these are, uh, these are examples of polder here. Um, any hex containing multiple solid blue lines is, is, in addition to other terrain, considered to be a polder hex. Polder is neither an obstacle nor a hindrance to line of sight. A hex with a polder, in addition to other terrain types, is considered to be that other terrain type, including open ground. The presence of more than one blue line has no additional effect. The TEM for infantry and polder is, so the terrain effects modifier is plus one. This TEM applies to infantry entering during the movement phase only if the infantry expends one extra movement point to enter the polder hex, but not if man handling a gun. Only infantry may claim this TEM which is never cumulative with any other TEM. Oh boy, and it goes on for a long time. So let me, uh, I thought that was it, and then I turned the page, I'm like, oh boy, I got a, little, a lot more to read here, I don't wanna bore you all with it. So let me read it, and I'll come back here in just a minute. Okay, so you can enter those hexes and either use the polder or not. If you use the polder, it's one extra movement point, and you get the TEM, otherwise you do not. And if you do, then you're not considered to be moving in the open for the purposes of, um, FFMO, which is uh, first fire movement in open ground. So you won't be, that's a penalty when moving and you're fired upon. So it's a minus, minus one to the shooter, which is great. And then if you're moving in non-assault movement, it's minus one too. So it's minus two typically when you're moving. Um... And you actually spend an extra movement factor in the hex when you're leaving the hex. So that's a little unusual. Hmm. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. So that, that adds a little bit of thing. Um... Vehicles pay a cost to terrain to enter the polder hex. To exit, they must first expend four movement points and pass a bog check. The four movement points to leave the polder hex is spent in the polder hex, and a bog occurs in the polder hex. There's a plus three DRM to the bog die roll unless the vehicle declares it will spend all of its movement points, other than any stop or start movement points, and the four movement points to enter the new hex. Upon passing the bog check, the vehicle expends a cost to terrain to enter the destination hex. Moving on the road negates it. Okay. 
Cool. Okay, so this is interesting. Got to read all the rules. Um, so the special rules, uh, rules one and three are in effect. So um, terrain is in effect, as well as British and SS units. British elite and first line do not cower. These are all covered up first line. SS, okay, I don't have to write infantry. Okay. Um, so uh, here's the thing. So there's an effect. The British player secretly records the location of his units. Um, all such units are placed on the board when they fire, direct fire, use their leadership modifier, or move, or if a German unit enters their hex, they are also placed on the board if the German unit fires in their hex as area fire, and any results except NE is obtained on the IFT. The hidden units are is affected by that result. Uh, a British unit may reveal itself at any time. German AFE must enter crew exposed and may not voluntarily button up until the advanced phase of the first German player turn. Okay, so I'm gonna leave them where they are right now, and um, you know, we'll call them, um, you know, you can't see them, so, but they can area fire. Um, crew exposed is good for this machine gun here, so I probably should have put the leader with him. I put them here to be as a rallying point. So um, they'll be able to fire that and the Piet. Um, so really probably, I think one time I played, I put the, um, I put the, um, maybe the, I think I put the British here because the German can come on here and then as soon as he does, or here or here, and then you can fire on him and he wouldn't see him. There's no like, uh, there's not a concealment or anything. Maybe even one back here to prevent the German from just doing that. So it really kind of actually opens it up for a lot of different ideas on what to do. I mean, and really, there's only three turns. So the the British don't want to be too far away from the road because then if you're like way over here and the German is like just decides to go over and shoots away and, and no one's around, well, then I thought they had to get off the board. So, so I'm going to leave him here for this time for this game. But it's kind of cool because it allows you to do a bunch of uh, different things here. I don't know. I think they're all turned because I was putting them on the board that way. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks. I'm going to keep reading. I'll come. Maybe I'll come back when I'm done. Start. I don't know when I'll come back. Who knows? Who can tell with this dude? Okay. Here we are. Um, so got them all in there. Took me a long time, but this is a long time since I played vehicles. Um, and I'm, oh, that's not supposed to be facing that way. That should be facing that way. And I'm sure I messed up some things, but... Um, so these are the German acquired markers, all the green ones. Then there's another green one. Where is that? Oh, how funny. I put that, I put it away. How funny. I saved it. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh, I'm moving the camera. So sorry. We'll just call it that. Um, so the green ones are the German. Oh, so did he, he did fire that. So he'll have that here. Now I'm not really clear. Oh, and then, so these are the Piets from him and him. But I don't, I couldn't find them to match the numbers of the troops. So I just put E and E, but it's confusing because now it looks like I got two acquisitions. So I need some guidance on how that's done normally during the game. Like, how would this infantry know who fired on who? The tanks are D, and I got them labeled here. And I think they're allowed to acquisition that, I hope. This guy says control. That's just so I remember they're hidden. Because remember, they could be hidden anywhere on the board. Anywhere, which is kind of cool. So really, what I think you want to do, I think a German, you want to put a guy here. Uh, as, I'm sorry, as a British, put a guy here. I think you get a little cover there in the orchard. Or maybe here. Maybe one of those spots, although you might well try to come here. But, and then maybe over here somewhere. And then that way you're, or here or here, somewhere like over here. So then you're on that side of the board too, to kind of prevent that gambit of going over what I'm going to do with this guy is move him over here and come around and say come get me because they're not going to be able to hurt me from over there and all I have to have is one tank and with main armament functioning um then I got it um so just a bunch of fire not a lot of effectiveness I mean the machine gun I did leave some residual fire here so that's cool uh 
And yeah, these guys should have left residual there, but I didn't need to worry about it. Question I have is, can both the, the coaxial and valve fire at the same time, like combined to a factor of eight? Though, during the move phase, it should have been one and a half and one and a half and two and a half. So that's four. So I'll fire right at four. But, um, but are they allowed to shoot them both? I'm combined there. Things or does it have to be fired separately? Because I did that, they couldn't fire in the bounding fire or the assault fire phase. I think I got it. I think I got it. that stuff figured out. Um, a local guy has said he, you know, he's willing to play some hassle historical ASL. So hopefully, we can get on and play some small ones, and he can kind of just start schooling me on concealment, uh, the stuff. Um, and, you know, heat of battle and stuff like that. And that'll help me when I'm playing with Jeff on this. I'm kind of trying to learn this so I can try to help Jeff learn as he proceeds up to this. He's playing some other starter kit, hex to hex. We want to play this together. So, all right, I think that's it for now. It's late bedtime, so I'll continue this uh, tomorrow, I hope. Um, okay, that's it. We'll talk to you. See ya. All right, uh, decision at Elst 1, decision at Hoop. Oh, pardon me. I really should put this on a tripod. Um, game over. Um, yeah, the British didn't do anything. They just basically all broke from the gun. So the tank, they need to be moving around. They can't just sit in those buildings that are not, there's no advantage to them to sit around really, except for the protection of the buildings. I mean, the tanks just sit back because all the tanks have to do is the victory condition is <clears throat> greater than one mobile AFV with functioning MA left on board. So I don't even have to destroy them, really. So that's important. So anyway, that was a, a fail on uh, from the British perspective and a great job from the, the, the Germans. So these guys can be hidden. So really what I should do is I probably should just put a, some counters out there somehow and um, and then reveal them. I think there's like... I could probably just come up with some various methods here to, to try some things um, to see if they pop up. Like I should probably, like there's three counters, maybe I should put six counters out and just roll a dice. You know, they'd all be in good locations and we'll see if they um, if they do anything. I don't know. I'll, I'll try something just since I'm doing it solo. But I do want to try again because there's a lot, just little details about tanks and uh, that stuff. I don't... I'm going to have to go back and look. I the the piots do not get acquisition, so that was a mistake I made early on. But anyway, need to try uh, try it again. Obviously, it's real simple. It's just the six nine counter six counters on here really with plus the weapons. All right, that's that. Uh, decision to dust ambush it. Hoop. Let's try it again, boys.